Sometimes it is seen that railroads were doomed. The Durango-Silverton Railroad is one of the most spectacular rides in the world. In 1960, it was nearly shut down. In 1883, the Orient Express ran from Paris to Istanbul and created the ultimate in luxury travel. It was abandoned in 1977. In 1887, rotary snow plows first fought the snowdrifts in the high Sierras. Looking like relics, they seem improbable holdovers from the past. Once this streamlined locomotive hauled passenger trains at 100 miles an hour, but for 20 years it sat outside a museum, its machinery rusting. Yet today, these trains still run the rails. Now they evoke a more remote past when trains first bridged the continent. Ferried recruits to war, provided celebrities with an opportunity to be seen and a chic way to travel. Gave a mobile campaign platform to politicians and offered a refuge for hobos. Train tracks disfigure the countryside. Trains assault the senses with brutal noise and begrind the air. How then account for the multitude of people who love trains? You're actually running a train. You, you just can't get enough. I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a junkie for trains. But <laughs> that's about it. I bought a caboose back in the 50s because I was busy riding trains in the 50s. And suddenly I read in the paper one day where trains were going to go out. All passenger trains would be taken off. And I knew unless I got a piece of the train, I would never be able to ride on the train again. So that's when I bought my caboose and put it in my yard. There are grown men who ride toy steam trains at a mountain retreat. There are train buffs who choose to ride through South America's Andes on a baggage rack. There's a town in Iowa that honors hobos. And there are thousands of young people competing for the chance to engineer a train. These are people who hearken to the lonesome whistle blowing and the clickety clack of wheels on rails. Theirs is a worldwide fraternity with no membership requirements beyond sharing in the love of trains. 